Hey, it's Joe Fair with Geek Toolkit, and today we're going to talk about how to build a home automation dashboard. We're going to use something called Grafana, which makes it look really pretty. Here's another look at what that looks like. And the data on the back end of this is something called InfluxDB. So we're going to do two uh, add-ons to Home Assistant to get us a dashboard that looks something like one of these here. First thing I want to talk about is this climate is something I built with the Echo Bee video I made. And you've got this temperatures here. This is five different temperature sensors throughout my house. And what I want to do is we're going to build this right here as a dashboard. First thing we need to do is go and get the add-ons. So just go to the add-on store. You're looking for one called Grafana. It's G-R-A-F-A-N-A. -A -A. It looks like that. You're looking for another one called InfluxDB. As typical, click on them and click the install button. When you get them installed, the first thing you want to do with both is turn off the SSL. It doesn't work on one of them, if I recall right, and the other one you would need to have your cert file connected. If you do have your certs figured out, then go ahead and hook that in. Once you have Grafana and Influx, Influx is going to be our database one that we're going to want to configure. Grafana will be the UI that renders the Influx database. So we're going to want to go down here. And then I'm going to go and add these both to the show and sidebar, and they'll end up over here. When you click on InfluxDB, if you get a 502 error, give it a while. Uh, it took me about five minutes before mine actually popped up. I did have to reboot also. Okay, once you do that, you'll end up here, and you're going to want to go to InfluxDB Admin. We're going to want to create a database. We're going to call it Home Assistant. And now I've got a Home Assistant database that we can put data into. We're also going to need a user. And I'm going to just call that user Home Assistant and do a PASWRD password. By default, the permissions will uh, be none. So make sure you go back and give this all and apply. This is probably one of the most common things that people miss from what I've seen. Okay, so now we've got the user permissions uh, created, things are updated, I've got a Home Assistant database here. The next thing we want to do is add this to our config file. So we're going to go to, let's see, I've got the file editor add-on, this makes this really easy. I can go to the configuration.yaml and edit that right in place. On the add-on page for InfluxDB, if you scroll down, it's going to show you the add-on uh, sample here, and it'll tell you what all the settings are. But if you go down a bit further, this right here is what you're going to want. Now, this is for configuring it if you use what, the, what used to be called HASIO. And again, the other thing you want to make sure right here, that this is a dash. I had an underline. I don't know where I got it from. I've seen a couple other people that have done this with an underline, and you get a terrible error that's very hard to debug. So make sure that's a dash. Uh, password, I did password here. But if you've been following the tutorial, you'll see that the database name I gave was Home Assistant. That matches up. The username I gave was Home Assistant. And this password, this gives us all of the info that's needed for Home Assistant to talk to InfluxDB and start putting data in. I'm going to look for the green check mark here. This is important. That shows that this is rendered correctly and that we don't have any uh, typos here. And then I'm just going to hit save there. Okay, back to the supervisor system and let's reboot. Now that we've rebooted, we're going to go down to the Grafana. And now what we want to do is hook the UI that we have in Grafana to InfluxDB. So we're going to add a data source and the type is an InfluxDB data source. We're going to give it a name, and then we're going to go to HTTP uh, this here, which we used before in our settings, our configuration, port 8086. We're going to go down to database, and remember that was called Home Assistant. You should probably have a username and password by now, and we're going to test it out. All right, we're good. Okay, so we're going to build out our first graph, but before we do, I'm going to show you some tricks real quick. If you go into developer tools and you click on entities, 
or states here. You can search for something like, for instance, I search for humidity and I'm just going to set it to 49 and I'll just set it back to 48. But what that does is that registers a state change. And when I go to influx DB here, basically just kind of hacking it so that I get, see, and now this shows up the hum home humidity. This wasn't here before. As the states change throughout Home Assistant, they will all end up uh, showing up in here, but I'm doing that to, for the demo. And also, if you're setting this up, you want to set up a dashboard, you don't want to wait for a state to change. That's a cool hack to get things going. So now we can go to uh, Grafana and we'll set up our dashboard here. So we're going to say build a dashboard. We'll add a query. And the first thing we're going to do is our temperature. So we'll add uh, Fahrenheit where the domain is equal to sensor. And now we've got dots over here. We're going to change the fill to none. And that gets this line. This line is all of the sensors put together. So we need to regroup them. So we're going to say uh, group by tag entity ID. And now I've got my five temperature sensors showing up as lines and things are starting to look pretty now. I'm starting to get happy. If I mouse over, I can actually see the values and I can see that my uh, upstairs and downstairs are about four or five degrees apart right now, which is kind of cool info to know and it's why I'm doing this. It also just looks pretty. The thing is these names are terrible. And so the way to fix that, there's an alias trick that you can do. You can do dollar sign tag, underscore and then whatever I put after here it will alias these. I want to alias them by the entity ID name. So I'm going to go entity underscore ID and click away and now that cleaned all of these up. It also when I mouse over it cleans up the names here. They all look right. So it's my wife's office, downstairs master, everything showing up as entity IDs right now which I can deal with. So that was add in the group by Make sure fill is none to get the lines to connect. If you don't do none, you'll end up with dots like this. And then tag entity ID to group them and separate them out. If I click down here to visualization, I can start changing these to different charts and graphs. We'll talk about that more in a second. Uh, the axes, I can do names and I mean, any if you've done any charting, you can name the axes, you can remove the legend. If I get rid of show, it goes away here. Um, if I do as table, it will vertically stack it. So you can kind of change everything how you want it to look. These values are really handy because I can click on average and it will add them next to the temperatures. And now I can very quickly see what the average temperature is in any of the rooms. You can do same with mins, max and such, or even current. Um, the setting here, panel title, this one's important because, of course, I want it to be labeled. I'm going to make it transparent just because I think it looks a little bit nicer. And you can set up alerts. So let's see. I'm going to save the dashboard here, call it temperatures, or actually, I'm going to just call it home. And there's my dashboard started out. So we've got temperatures now. Let's create a new one here. We're going to add another query and we're going to go to percent. We're going to go after the humidity. So where the domain is sensor and there's our humidity. Actually, let's see if we change this to entity ID equals home humidity. There we go. Uh, field value mean time we will do none to make that connect when it starts registering. Type in humidity. There it goes. All right, so maybe the humidity looks better as a number or maybe as a chart. Uh, let's see here. We'll just we'll do it as a graph. That's fine. We can graph the humidity, and we we'll want to go down to settings. Call this one humidity. Okay, we'll save that off, and now we can drag these around so we can do this and we'll add another panel. Now we're going to get into um, networking and I'll show you how to stack them. So this is uh, bytes per second outgoing, I believe. We'll just say bytes per second. And now if I click on the add query here, 
I'm actually adding another chart on the same graph and that's super, super handy. So let's see, that one was bytes, so we'll do kilobytes per second. Yeah, and so now I've got kind of a uh, database thing. Let's see, for the router, let's see if, uh, ah, that looks much, whoa, bytes per second's a bit large, I can fix that. Um, but this is showing my network uh, usage, and you know, just for an example, this works out well. We'll just call this network usage. Drag this down and place it wherever you want it. And so now we've got some uh, home climate charts going on. We've got a network usage chart that's a bit of a mess, but just kind of shows the concept. And this is how you would build a home dashboard. You basically just kind of keep adding to this. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you make. Uh, I really appreciate you watching this video. I really was excited when I first saw these dashboards and had a really hard time getting things set up. So I'm glad that I was able to walk through this fairly quickly for you. Hope you enjoy it, and if you want to see more videos like this, like and subscribe. The next video should be getting this onto the Magic Mirror. Um, appreciate everyone watching and subscribing. Appreciate the likes and the great comments. Thank you so much, and until next time, I'm Joe Farrow with Geek Toolkit.